ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to In Conversation with the Royal Butler. Now, today I want to talk to you about uh, one of my one of my favourite royals, who is Princess Anne, the Princess Royal. Now, Princess Anne was born in 1950, so a few years after her brother, and was the second uh, in line to the throne. But of course, since then, the Queen obviously had her other children, and then Prince Charles had Prince William and Harry, uh, and of course, as with other members of the family, had their children, and she's moved further and further uh, down the, the line of succession. However, she is still one, if I can say, one of the most popular royals, but also one of the most hardworking royals. And it was always such a, a pleasure and a joy whenever you knew she was around or to look after. Because I always say to you that, that royals are very down to earth. And I mean that. A, a lot of them are, uh, in fact, most of them, if not all of them, are very down to earth, very approachable, um, wonderful to be around. And Princess Anne was the exact same. But the other thing about Princess Anne is she's not only down to earth and approachable, she's very much uh, a kind of hands-on royal. And it's quite often that you will see her uh, doing things, obviously, well, you all see her doing her official engagements, but what we see, and when I say we, I'm not talking about as a member of staff, I'm talking about as, a, as um, somebody that lives within this area, uh, she's also somebody that's kind of spotted doing things locally um, as you'd expect anybody to do, you know, the, the shopping or the errands and those kind of things. She very much does things herself and it's really nice to see. In fact, some people are always surprised. They will say to me, uh, we saw Princess Anne in a certain shop the other day. Is that not unusual? Does she not send us stuff? And I think, well, no, that's, that's very much how she is. She lives at Gatcombe House. She's been there for quite a few years, uh, the Gatcombe estate, which isn't too far from Highgrove. In fact, I often, if I drive over to Minch Hampton, which is not too far from where I am now, uh, you actually drive past her estate. And it's, it's, um, it's quite a substantial size. It's nothing ridiculous, but it's a nice estate. And every year, um, well, when we didn't have COVID, she would have the Gatcombe horse trials, which would become quite famous uh, certainly within this area, if not within within the country. And it's it's quite a big event that she has every year and does really well. And of course, she's very much into, um, she's very much, a, can I say, a horse lady. She loves her horses. She's a, a very, um, a very good rider. She's got a love for the, for the, for the horses, for the animals. And, and so has her family. So has her, her son and daughter, very much her daughter. I mean, Zara uh, is very much an accomplished horse rider. So it's, um, it's a real passion of hers and it's something that she enjoys very much. And as I said, each year, obviously before COVID, you would have the Gatcombe horse trials, which are well worth, uh, well worth actually going along to watch. Now, some people say to me, they get a bit confused with the titles because she's known as Princess Anne and she's known as the Princess Royal. And that's, the Princess Royal is a, is a separate title and it's one that's, that's given by the monarch. And it's, it's not unusual, it does often go to the monarch's daughter. 
uh, has done in the past and uh, with Princess Anne that's exactly what happened so it's quite um and it's lovely that she that she was was given the title because um you know she's the, she's as I mentioned she's a very hard working royal you know she she does I can't remember how many but it's hundreds hundreds upon hundreds of engagements each year and if I can also mention being Scottish I'm also fully aware of her love for Scotland because she very much supports the Scottish rugby. So if anybody out there enjoys rugby, she's very much, she's always at the stadium again before COVID. She was always at the stadium kind of cheering on the, the Scottish rugby team. And and also in Scotland, she would carry out quite a lot of engagements. I mean, the Royals all carry out engagements in Scotland, but she would carry out quite a lot of engagements up there. And do you know, I think in Scotland, she's very much, she's she's very loved because she's always been part of, of Scotland. Now, she's been married twice. She married Captain Mark Phillips in 1973, and that's the father of Zara and um, Peter. And then she met her uh, her mother's equerry, Timothy Lawrence, and they got married in 1992 and are married to date. And they got married in Scotland at Crathy Church on the Bomorrow Estate. And I remember that, I'm sure... There's a few of you who remember that. And I thought it was really nice because obviously her first wedding being in London, all the pomp and circumstance, quite rightly, because she's the, the, the only daughter of the Queen and the late Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. And so the fact she then chose to have her second wedding in Scotland was quite a, I thought it was quite a, a really touching thing. And, and again, showed uh, how much she loves Scotland because we don't often... I say we in Scotland. They don't often get to have royal weddings, so it was quite a it was quite a nice quite a nice occasion. mention that when it comes to royal titles I have been asked why does Princess Anne's children Peter and Zara why they don't have royal titles because you would expect um, well you'd, you'd probably assume that they would have um, HRH being members of the royal family or grandchildren of the monarch and titles however from what it was it said at the time and I believe Princess Anne has, has spoken about this is she didn't want titles for them to give them uh, as much as possible uh, a normal upbringing. So she declined uh, the titles when I believe the Queen um, was going to bestow titles upon them. So it gives you an idea that Princess Anne wanted her children to have as normal uh, upbringing as possible and they went to schools within the area, they're you know, very much a kind of um, a normal family, if I can say that. I mean, if I go up to London, I'll quite often maybe see Peter at the, the train station, and which is great because it gives me an opportunity to have a, have a catch up and and it's lovely to see him. And it's the same with Zara. If I've, you know, if you ever bump into Zara, it's nice to, to catch up with, with her as well. Um, so they are very much a, a local family. They, um, if I say can say they do local things, and I think that's it's really nice, and it's also nice for the community because I think um, to see how down to earth and, and normal and how involved they are in everything that goes on is I think really is really important.
Now, you might not know that Princess Anne is one of the only royals who's actually had an attempt at kidnapping. Uh, somebody tried to kidnap her in 1974 on the Mall. She was returning back to Buckingham Palace after a charity event and this chap decided he was going to have a go at kidnapping her and uh, there's actually quite a lot of footage of this where she actually talks about it and from what I understand she was very polite about the whole thing and, and managed to kind of convince him that it wasn't such a good idea which I love because that's exactly that's exactly what Princess Anne is like you know she's very much straight to the point says it as it is and thankfully convinced the the chap that she didn't want to obviously be kidnapped and he then uh, stopped thankfully so she the fact that happened to her and she kind of managed to kind of stand her ground on it I think it also gives you a bit of a an insight into the kind of character that she that she is um, but I I just love the fact that she was as I said this footage of this it's it's worth um, YouTube in it I believe it's with um, it was either Michael Paxson or Terry Wogan and you'll find her talking about the the kidnapping and she's she says she was very polite about it very matter of fact and and didn't really want to go and that was that so um so there we go princess Anne, straight to the straight to the point <laughs> Now, of course, over the years when I was working for the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall, I had opportunities to look after and get to know Princess Anne. And I thought she was absolutely wonderful. I just, she's very polite, very down to earth. As I said, says it as she means it, which is, is fantastic. You know where you are. And, um, but one of the funniest things that happened, I remember when I was getting used to the phone system and the fact that you can pick up a phone and it is a member of the royal family or a king or a queen or a president, at the other side of the phone and it takes a little while to get used to this and as a butler you've got to be quite good at answering phones so uh, but I had plenty of practice when working for the Royal Household and I remember on this one occasion um, I was I, I actually was off duty I, I remember um, I, I was I wasn't even on duty and uh, I heard the phone ring and because I was I think I was I quickly popped to check something and I picked the phone up and there was other staff members um, around and I remember picking up the phone and I heard this this voice and it was quite loud so everyone, everybody could hear. And this voice said, um, Princess Anne. Now, I was quite used also to the fact that when you had a, a member of the Royal Family phone up, you would normally have, like, say, a Buckingham Palace would phone up and say who it is and then you'd put them through or um, so take the call over. And so when I heard this voice say Princess Anne, I was like, yes, wonderful, thank you meaning thinking it's a, re a receptionist at the Buckingham Palace and I'm saying yes thank you you know put, you can put the call through and then the voice then said again Princess Anne and I said yes absolutely please I'm very happy to speak and then the voice again said Princess Anne and I said yes I, I can deal with Princess Anne please um, I can deal with her and then on the next attempt it was um, this is Princess Anne the Princess Royal <laughs> And I remember kind of going, ah, oh, um, yes, uh, absolutely, sir. And because I said sir, because I went into panic, the other members of the household around me that heard this, they were all going, ma'am, ma'am, because obviously with uh, with any royal ladies after your highness, it's always ma'am. And then they were shouting ma'am, and I'm in the middle of saying, yes, sir, absolutely, sir, um, which probably didn't really help the situation. Uh, and then I think... Um, but then it, it, it then was fine because I, I managed to kind of sort out the, the request and it was all good. But I very quickly learnt that when you answer the phone, always, you know, never assume you know who it is. Always be slightly cautious because you could, you could have a member of the royal family directly on the other end of that line.
as I said, Princess Anne is involved in over 300 charities. So that's why I said she's one of the hardest working royals and undertakes many hundreds of engagements each year. And I think that's quite amazing. I mean, 300 patronages or charities, it's, it's quite a few. And obviously she treats each one the, the same and gives it the same amount of attention, which is quite something. So when people say to me, are royals hard working? Well, I think that kind of speaks for itself because when you see those kind of those kind of numbers and realising that that's very much something that she's involved in, which with each charity, um, to give it um, all she can, that, that gives you an idea of, of um, how much they do. So that's sometimes I get a bit frustrated when people say that, you know, to be a royal, it's, it's such a, an easy kind of life. Don't get me wrong. I know maybe they, they live in beautiful homes and they obviously, um, you know, get there's there's a lot of privileges, but but there is a, a very hard work inside to it that a lot of people don't see. I've seen that, so I'm fully aware of how hard working they are. And when I say Princess Anne is a hard working royal, she really is um, very much a hard working royal and um, one that that does her best to her her ability. Now, I have had people ask me that since the the, the line of succession has changed, did that not mean that Princess Anne? Um, would move further up the the kind of ranking, but of course that's been changed for the the kind of next next generation, as far as I understand it. So it will not make any change to the line of succession. Now it has again, people have said to me she would make a wonderful queen, and I agree. I think Princess Anne would be a a marvelous queen because, as I said, hard working, dedicated, and loyal to the job. But the reality is that the line of succession is very much already there and we know that uh, it will go from our present queen to her son, Prince Charles, and then lastly on to his son, Prince William, and obviously um, that's our future king. I also remember when I was off duty, I would often often see Princess Anne at different events, whether it be um, parties or um, you know Christmas parties, uh, parties at the palace, uh, different events, and it was always nice to see her because she would always come and have a chat with everybody, and um, you know, but just as I said, very down to earth, just come around, have a little chat, kind of catch up, and it was it was quite nice because. Um, they don't need to do this. You know, this is what's so wonderful. They they could go to these events and kind of keep to themselves or the royals just stick to themselves, but they don't. You know, they very much mingle and chat and, and it gives you a chance. It's great for somebody that's kind of, when you're kind of new in this um, world, because it gives you a chance to get to know them from, obviously you know them from working for the family, but you get to know them privately as well. And I think that's quite that's quite nice that you get to see that side of it as well and it, it really um it makes it it makes it fun it makes it down to earth and it makes it quite relaxing i haven't i mean when i used to go up to scotland and i've been to the gillies ball as i've mentioned in previous conversations and i've seen um i've, I've danced as i've mentioned with the, the queen and other members of the royal family but i never had the opportunity to dance fun enough with princess anne and when people have said to me you know, is, there, is there any other royal you would like that opportunity with probably princess anne because i think she she's a very good dancer and um it never happened but um who knows maybe one day maybe i'll get invited back and i'll i'll get to to do that next and then um I think that'd be that'd be quite fun, but um, but but on saying that, when I have gone to these uh, you know kind of events and things, it's always quite nice just to see them um, very relaxed, very comfortable, and um, yeah, great. You know, as I always say, great memories.
I hope you've enjoyed today's In Conversation with the Royal Butler. Uh, it's a slightly shorter one, um, but I will be back again on Wednesday with At Home with the Royal Butler, next Wednesday at 5pm. And of course, our next In Conversation with the Royal Butler, uh, which will be next Friday again at 5pm. Until then, please keep liking, sharing um, these videos and keep your comments coming in and stay safe.